On Saturday, Dale Roswell became the oldest driver to win the Delano Pole Award. Roswell is 66 today on the day of the race, so he could become the series' only ever driver to win a race, a points-paying race, on their birthday. And uh, for a driver like Dale Roswell, who has so many records in this series, uh, that would be a very fitting way to end his career. That is, if he is retiring, as we all suspect after this race. Uh, there was a lot of uh, madness in practice, to say the least, and uh, some of it involving the power steering incorporated drivers. Kurt Pliskin and Anthony Griffith got together. Griffith was sent to the back of the grid. Chris Davenport and Manny Brown, who's returning to the series, um, also tangled. Uh, Davenport made some contact with Brown afterwards in the pit lane, and, the, and because of that, the, uh, he was sent to the back of the grid as well. And uh, from the round of Quebec, Davina Henton, uh, the, uh, who was leading the championship, uh, actually was docked a couple of points for uh, the collision she made with Kevin Dwyer uh, in that race. Henton starts at the back of the grid for this race, and uh, her morale has not been very good all weekend. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. 66 years ago, Dale Roswell was born. Today, he leads the field to the green flag with Luciano Savaral, the Brazilian, on his outside. Roswell gets a pretty good start. So does Savaral. Adrian Devereaux, not such a very good start. The reigning champion in car number one is Savaral. Tries to make a run on the outside of Roswell. On the Ohio Motor Speedway here, very short straightaways for a track this size and very wide corners. Dale Roswell gets around Savaral, though. Despite Savaral's best efforts to lead the first lap, Roswell has the honor as Savaral tries flying it into turn one. Manny Brown in uh, car 416. The 38-year-old is back in the series for a third car for Power Sting Incorporated with the promoter's option. Power Sting Incorporated got the promoter's option and uh, ran a contest with the fans to see uh, who would get to drive this car. And uh, Manny Brown will drive the car here at Ohio. And next week, it'll be Giovanni Rota, the Italian, who will drive a Quincy. Manny Brown's been out of the series since 2009. Leonid Roderick in car number four has a run on Luciano Savaral, and Roderick takes the spot as Michael Sykes, the Welshman, tries to follow Savaral through. Michael Sykes, that five car's been quick, but so has Roderick. Roderick is the man with momentum. He won at Quebec, the very last race at Road Gatineau. Chris Johans is teammate for this race, and the number 14 Volpe is the first retirement on lap six. Johans needs some luck that... Uh, Volpe just kind of grenaded on him when he was downshifting. And uh, the gearbox packed up, and Johans is going to have an early exit to the race. He needs some luck. Melanie Clevno, car number 12, has been running. Oh, Clevno around into turn one. And it looks like she just lost the back end of that car under braking. Um, on the radio, Melanie Clevno said that something, uh, that, it, that the car suddenly snapped around as if something broke at the back of the car. Chris Davenport in car number six ran over some of the debris. And uh, clearly that did some terminal damage to the six car because Davenport, who's had, uh, as is usual, a pretty messy weekend, ends very quickly, very early. Davenport started at the back due to a penalty. Most everybody, uh, looks like every single car, is pitting under this caution because it did rain overnight and they wanted to check tire wear because this track has been very abrasive on tires. Dale Roswell is, in the, is leading on the restart. He's the oldest driver to win a race, and that was over five years ago. He won at Indy. He could be the, become the series' first birthday winner, believe it or not. No driver has ever won a points race on their birthday, as he is 66 today. Uh, so Roswell in the 20 car continues to lead. As you see there, several drivers have been pinged for jumping the restart. One of them, VJ Pushanda, another independent trophy driver, uh, that is Chris Allen, the 426, also uh, got a drive-through for jumping the restart in the 426 car. Luciano Savaral in the 3 car did as well. But he had a very slow pit stop because they were making an adjustment to the three car, and that really delayed him. And uh, Davina Henton in car number 11 is also going to get pinged. Also got pinged for that in uh, the Lynx car. Henton has not been having a good weekend. Her morale has not been the same it was earlier in the year. Daniel Melrose in the Melrose Racing Team car. New colors for that car. James Davidson right there in that 222 car. You may have also seen a graphic. He also... I uh, got, uh, got a drive through for jumping the restart, but he served in a lap later. Daniel Melrose, the Australian, the mad uncle, a uh, new paint job on the 67 car, and he seems to be very, very confident about this weekend. The, uh, the Vernstrom is very quick on long runs during practice. Leonard Roderick in car number four makes a run on Dale Roswell, will take the lead, sliding the rear end of that car through one and two. As uh, Roswell 
as racing him very cleanly. Oh, Roswell pinching him down just a little bit, not giving him a whole lot of room, but Roswell drops back as they encounter the lap traffic, that being VJ Pushanda on the 57, who really doesn't have really doesn't have anywhere else to go because the leaders did run him down very quickly. Pushanda holding his line, but uh, I think Roswell would prefer he'd be a lane higher. Kevin Dwyer in the 72 car has had an awful weekend. He's blown two engines on a track like this. We've had, we've had very few mechanical problems on cars. But Kevin Dwyer has had a terrible weekend. Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. Start back. Confederates run a program for psychically gifted humans, training them to be ghosts. Those running the program found that the Zerg are tuned to the psychic emanations of ghosts. There's been a lot of secret Confederate research surrounding ghosts and the Zerg. What we stole was a small but critical piece of the puzzle. Designs for a transplanar psionic waveform emitter. The emitters broadcast the neural imprint of a ghost that had a much greater magnitude. Wiggles Jr. started all the way back in 40th. He's running in 15th. Scott Stoidler is running in the uh, third car for alert. His uncle, Marty Stoidler, some of you may remember him, a uh, competitor in the 80s, will probably be returning to the series at Quincy, so we'll have two drivers with the name Stoidler on the grid for the round of Quincy. Scott Stoidler, on the other hand, he's having a fantastic day today with his first run for uh, the alert team. Tom Moore up in 17th. He was second here last year. He's looking to improve on that. Uh, he's had, uh, uh, he hasn't quite been as strong as he seemed last year, but uh, the determination is still there for Moore. Adrian Devereaux in car number one is back to 19th place as, oh, they're lapping Manny Brown, and uh, Brown is, is uh, well, anyways, Adrian Devereaux getting around James Davidson, who's having, a, he's having a much easier time with us. There's Manny Brown, who, um, uh, Manny Brown hasn't been running in this series since 2009. Uh, he's been having a lot of problems all weekend. He's trying to let everyone go by on the inside, but really, uh, he's uh, kind of lucky he actually qualified for this race because uh, he just barely made it under the 110% rule. And, uh, yeah, there's some problems with the back end of that car. He got into an accident with Chris Davenport uh, in practice. Davenport was none too happy with Brown as Brown goes up into turn three. He hits the wall. And uh, Manny Brown is just hanging on for dear life, it seems, out there. Uh, but anyways, Leonard Roderick in car number four is beginning to stretch his lead a little bit. Luciano Salvarol is, uh, the, is now the second-to-last car in the lead lap, but Roderick is uh, not really closing in on the Brazilian as much as he would like. Arto Kakinen started at the back of the grid. He is uh, now up to 22nd place in the Gessler. So uh, Kakinen, who's, uh, who won this race last year, has... Uh, got some work to do but uh, despite that the Finn has um, really had a very bullish attitude about this week uh, he's very determined here as we have the battle for sixth place between two very popular drivers in the paddock you have Jenny Kuznetsov in the number eight Katsiv and the 67 Vernstrom of Mad Uncle Melrose in that 67 car uh, this is Kuznetsov's best weekend of this, of this season by far and he did run the Arlo Elite Series which runs a lot of short tracks Quiggles Jr. still holding on to 15th the Confederacy used these Psi emitters to lure the Zerg into isolated containment areas. Your colony, Marsara Commander, was one such location. What are you saying? I'm saying the Zerg are a secret weapon developed by the Confederacy. I'm saying we're all subjects of a Confederate weapons What's test. What's going on there? Anyways, Manny Brown in the 416 car getting lapped by Melrose and uh, Kuznetsov. There's uh, that 18 car of Troy Adams who's also having a very strong day in that in uh, that Nemoto as here comes Kevin Dwyer on the inside. Kevin Dwyer shoots him the bird as he goes by. He's uh, five laps down at this point. He's not making any friends out there, that's for sure. Stoidler in the 70 car goes by. As here comes the 74 car of Duff. Uh, as here we're now we're looking at Daniel Melrose in the 67. Troy Adams has got a run on the Australian. Two Australians here battling for position in two red and black cars. Adams gets the, gets the place. Quiggles Jr. getting held up by the 416 of Brown. Uh, as there comes Darren Cardell sliding in that 87 car, that uh, gray and orange car. He's all, he's all sorts of sideways there. But uh, Quiggles Jr. not terribly happy, I don't think, behind that 416 car. And I think that might have been another bird shot at Manny Brown. So uh, this is going to be an interesting day. Leonid Roderick still leads the race. Yeah, it's Peter Short on the 22 car. The 29 car this weekend is being driven by Venezuelan TM Lights driver Mariano Zavala. 
So Zavo, whoa, Zavala cutting in that in, uh, a little bit uh, too low as Roderick had that car all sorts of sideways. Melanie Klevno has gotten her way back up to 12th. Klevno uh, has the second fastest lap of the race. Is oh no! She has the first. Uh, she has the first and second fastest laps of the race. And there goes uh, the Gessler engine in that Lynx car. The Melanie Klevno is out of the race. She has brought up both of the first two cautions. And uh, the very optimistic Swiss driver has had a uh, well. A very oh no! Rossini piles in. Oh no! I think Rossini's spotter may have told him that. Uh, Klevno was high off turn two, and he and he thought he was in a she was in a different place. Leonid Roderick pits after everyone else has pitted once. Uh, he the pace car lights are uh, gonna go off when, as uh, the field uh, comes by the stripe, but I don't know what Roderick is doing here. Oh look at this! Look at Roderick by going the pit speed is actually gaining ground on the pace car. Now, I see what Volpe's trying here. They fueled him up a little bit, and they're gonna send him back out in front of the field. He's given the sign by the uh, by the flagger there, and Roderick has now stretched it. Is now actually gone into the pits under caution and gained ground on uh, some of his competitors. Now uh, the pace car peels in. He's gonna let he lets the pace car pass him. As uh, oh, we got we got more trouble back here. As uh, Michael Sykes has been uh, called into the pits by the team. They say the five car has a tire going down. Ben Atkins doesn't let him in. Sykes, he just roughs him up into the wall. Those two have had a bit of contact in practice anyway, so they're not exactly on the best of terms anyways. Um, so anyways, we've got to... So while all of those shenanigans were going on, the field is going to take the restart. I don't know how the stewards are going to judge what Roderick was trying there. And that's exactly what I thought was going to happen. Yep, they issued the black flag to the four car for jumping the restart. That's the uh, reason they're giving. He didn't jump the restart, but he was certainly playing with the rule book. Leonid Roderick there didn't exactly. Oh, Brown around into the wall for the car 416. That's surprisingly, that almost took uh, a little longer than I thought it would for him to hit the wall the first time. Uh, so Manny Brown in the 416 car brings out a caution. Leonid Roderick is going to be hating himself for that because he lost a lot more ground than he would have otherwise if this one actually ran out green for a while. Matthias Taub in the 10 car, the Swede is now leading on, on the restart. Uh, as you see, the uh, all 37 cars that are still running on the left side. Anyways, Roswell is hanging on to second, but for how long? Cameron Taylor is in the 28 car now that Scott Stoidler has moved over to the 70 car for a couple of races. Cameron Taylor will be in this car for uh, this race here, in, uh, his home race here in Ohio. Uh, and uh, for the next round of Quincy, he'll rejoin Team Timothy at Road America. Uh, the driver for Road America has not been determined. Some people think that the Team Mexico points leader, Carlos Roqueta, will be in the car. Here is Anthony Griffith in the 07 car, the very controversial uh, Tenere factory driver. He's having a, oh, he's got that car a bit, a bit sideways, but Griffith has actually been very competitive this weekend. Didn't qualify, it didn't really qualify well. Got sent to the back of the grid after uh, that uh, incident with Kirk Pliskin in practice. The team said that uh, the team was a uh, representative from the team told me that didn't bother them too much. They didn't focus on qualifying at all. David Krikorian in the third Hodges Walter car is running in third place. DK is only going to be in this car until Indianapolis. We think Alan Hodges will be back in the car then, but the team has left the door open for DK to run Indy as well. Matthias Taub is still leading the race as here we have the 70 car back in fourth place with Scott Stoidler at the wheels. He goes around Roswell now, so Stoidler moves himself up another place. Taub has got Luciano Savarola and Davina Henton right behind him. Those are two, both those cars off the lead lap, and both of them are very fast. Savarola in that three car. Oh, here comes back. Whoa! Look out, Packer Carroll. This is Carroll's home race. Luciano Savarola gives him a little brush saying he didn't like that very much. Packer Carroll. A lot of people are not very fond of the pit exit here, and that's why uh, but Luciano Savarol not happy with Packer Carroll. It's Kurt Pliskin in the 16 car. Uh, the uh, PSI, the lead driver over at Power Singer Incorporated, having a very good day. Lu uh, Lewis Kingston and Michael Sykes roughing each other up a little bit behind him. Troy Adams in the 18 car has a uh, this smoke filling out the back of that car. We believe the uh, we believe the engine is gone on that car. He's holding his line now. And Troy Adams, oh, what is he doing? Why is he sideways in the middle of the track like that? Re oh, Packer Carroll, nowhere to go. Packer Carroll had to, oh, Pliskin into him. Oh, no, what What on earth? 
was Troy Adams thinking when he left the car sideways like that? As Mariano Zavala gets a tiny piece of that, Kurt Pliskin is out. Kevin Dwyer, a lot of damage to the front end of that car. It looks like Lecklider in the 47 has a bit of damage as well. But that was an insane maneuver by Troy Adams. I don't know why he, he left it sideways like that. I, I wonder if he was thinking he would force the caution to come out so that they could bring a wrecker out on track. But even still, you don't need to do something as crazy as that to, and for that to happen. Oh, goodness me. Packer Carroll in the two car had to pit earlier, as I was going to say, because he had some damage after scraping the wall. But as Darren Cardell, who is now a, who is a lap down, uh, got one lap down under, uh, because of that mess, is now gotten away from Matthias Taub. Cardell back in the lead lap temporarily as Taub tries to hold off Greg Woodard in the 41, who has uh, had a less than desirable day. Problems of plague the 41 car all day. Taub leads over Roswell, as you see right behind him, in that 20 car. And then Krikorian and Ashby entering the frame in the 55. Look out for Ashby as... Uh, Matthias Taub continues to uh, continues to lead as here we got Roswell. He's trying to hold off Ashby in the 55 Zelda Ashby has uh, some pretty legendary abilities on these restarts on the short ovals um, We've seen Ashby uh, really claw her way through the field quite quickly and uh, That uh, that uh, the FPO term uh, the Terminator T9000 has been uh, a very good car for Ashby this year Adrian Devereaux in car number one is beginning to claw his way through the field. Dan Lechleiter in the 47 car is um, having a strong run for Tenere. Lechleiter driving for his own team with a Tenere car, a Tenere's home race. Uh, he is representing them very, very well today, despite the fact he has rear-end damage to that car. They, uh, di they uh, opted not to fix it, I don't think. Now I can still see the damage there. They opted not to fix it under that caution for track position reasons, and that appears to be paying off for him right now. He's hanging on, and uh, Lechleiter could be a serious factor here um, in that 47 car. As Greg Woodard tags the back of the race leader, Matthias Taub runs himself up into the high lane. I don't think that was on purpose. Um, there's Yulina Sova in the 7 car trying to avoid going... Oh, Manny Brown again. This ought to be fun. As uh, the rest of the leader... Oh, these aren't all leaders here. Scott Bates is a couple laps down. Talk about someone who needs some luck is Scott Bates, who has had a lot of pace lately. He's got a lot of speed still, but there's no... I did, Lieutenant. The Confederates on Antigua were bad enough, but now you're going to use the Zerg against an entire planet? This is insane. You all have your orders. Carry them out. What is going on over there? Seriously. Uh, anyways, Darren Cardell in that 87 car is about to go a lap down again to uh, Matthias Taub in the 10, but he needs a caution right now, and he is praying for one uh, so that he can get himself back into this race because there's not too many cars on the lead lap. So uh, that would be, that is a pretty big deal for Cardell. David Krikorian in the 66 car is uh, having a strong run as usual. Very nice paint job on that car. DK has been very strong in that car uh, in his very limited appearances in it, despite ha not having the results to show it. De oh, contact here between Lewis Kingston and Tom Moore. Oh, Kingston just punted the 52. That was for position. And uh, I want to have, have another look at that. I think Kingston may have been a bit... Oh, Tom Moore slowed down very early and turned in when the 17 car was committed to going on the inside. There's no way for Kingston to avoid that. He moved onto the apron to try to avoid it. But the 52 went in the wall, and Darren Cardell is going to be grinning from ear to ear. That caution means he's back on the lead lap in the Vernstrom. Matthias Taub made a similar trick work earlier in the year, and it paid off for him uh, later on. Taub in the 10 car, still leading. Roswell still second. Ashby in third in the 55. Uh, so that uh, the Zelda Ashby team, the FPO, having a strong run with both cars today. Although I would really like to know what is going on over on the actual pit wall for Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. As uh, Taub continues to lead here with Yulina Sova providing Dale Roswell with some minor headaches. Scott Stoidler in the 70 car almost runs into the back of the car he normally drives. Uh, Stoidler, we believe, will be back in the 28 car for uh, uh, Indy. But uh, Cameron Taylor, sort of, they're sort of interim with Cameron Taylor and we believe Roquetta, but we're not quite sure on who will be running at Road America. David Krikorian in the 66 car. Uh, he's sort of cruising right now, waiting for uh, waiting for a long run to set in. DK was working a lot on long run setups, uh, mostly throughout practice, even though some people expected this race to be a crash fest. That hasn't 
Uh, we haven't really had uh, too many cautions here in Ohio before, so uh, Krikorian sort of uh, just kind of waiting to see what will happen and let the race play out as Manny Brown hits the wall for what seems like the 50th time today in uh, his Lycoya. Not exactly a good day for him. Zach Duff, on the other hand, is having a fantastic day, running up in 11th place. His teammate, of course, got into an accident earlier on after uh, Dwyer is having a strong run. Duff now trying to pick up the pieces and salvage something. That Juno has been very, very good here, even though it doesn't have the power. Adrian Devereaux is into the pits for a cut tire, apparently. So the reigning series champion is in trouble. He was running an eighth in uh, that car that some people are calling the Killer Shark because, uh, well, of its dark blue coloring, it's very distinctive uh, uh, orange valence on that car. Zelda Ashby in the 55 has moved up to second place. So, uh, so Ashby in the 55 trying to make something up today. Could we have another podium at, uh, or potentially a win for Ashby? Here's Mariano Zavala who is taking Chris Johans' place in the 29. He's running 19th and he's into the wall and he's going to lose that 19th place because I do believe Roderick was racing in fourth position there as Ashby slides it in. Almost runs into the back of the Venezuelan who is um, uh, mostly in there because of his uh, financial input. Wiggles Jr., uh, as I was mentioning earlier, has had a fantastic day so far. Started way back in 40th, uh, was demoted ba back to the grid for that collision he caused the first corner at Quebec, and uh, he's now up to 15th in the uh, Sons of Corhall car, number 99. Um, Wiggles Jr. himself, uh, one of the more colorful characters, the Sealander, having a fantastic rookie year. As David Krikorian blows up, DK is out, the 66 car is up in smoke. He, ne uh, he needs some good luck sometime in his Master Cup career. How does Walter Racing knows he's got the speed? But talking about speed, Darren Cardell in the Vernstrom is running in fifth. Cardell in this 87 car, voted in with the promoter's option, much to my surprise, having a fantastic day. Matthias Taub still leads, but as you see right there, Ashby closing in on the Swede. So... We'll have a, uh, we could have a titanic battle for the lead right here between Taub, who hasn't won in a while since last year at his home race, and uh, Manny Brown in the, uh, oh, Manny Brown into the wall! All right, as we were having a good battle for the lead, about to set in. He is about eight laps down. He hasn't done anything except get in the way anyway. That's about what he spent mo the rest of his career doing. Matthias Taub still leads on the restart, but as you notice there, we've got uh, Darren Cardell in third. And in sixth, we have Daniel Lecklider and Scott Stoidler. We've got a lot of promoters option cars that are in contention for this one. So it looks like the promoters certainly know how to pick cars that will uh, pick drivers that, and cars that will really make this this an exciting race. It certainly has. Matthias Taub, though, is still leading the is still leading the way. Peter Short in that 22 car having a decent day. Here is Ashby. Running in fifth place, that's Gaspar D'Souza right in front of her in eighth. D'Souza having a solid day, the uh, the Portuguese driver, despite being a lap down. D'Souza has been having a very strong season in this very distinctive Clever Media Tremwell. We believe that Black Diamond Racing is still running last year's Tremwell, and D'Souza had a very strong start to the season. His form sort of tapered off a little bit after Cariala, but it looks like it's back on the rise. He's still in the top ten of the championship. Scott Stoyther is running in third. Pretty good run for him. Fantastic run, dare I say it, considering that he was only confirmed uh, to be driving this car on Wednesday. And uh, Stoiler didn't have a whole lot of practice time either. Uh, practice time was curtailed by uh, some problems at the rear end of the car, but he's having a great run today. Darren Cardell is running in fourth in what is easily the best run I've ever seen out of one of the Vernstrom cars. And considering Darren Cardell's luck in the TM Light Series, I would say that he would. I would not expect him to be making uh, a run like this today. Zelda Ashby and Dale Roswell are squabbling over fifth place. Ashby makes a dive, gets into the side of Roswell, but there goes the 55 right on through. Ashby makes the move stick, and Ashby up to fifth. Roswell down to sixth. Both drivers still in the hunt for this one. Uh, Roswell and Ashby could be making a run at it later on, but it looks like both of their cars have sort of dropped off a little bit as other people have made adjustments to theirs. Here is the 07 car of Anthony Griffith, who's been running in 15th. Uh, the uh, the uh, Tenere Factory team, Team Thunder, having a very solid season so far. He's got Ian Cooper right behind him in the 777 car. That's Cameron Taylor in the 28. Jacob Eicholtz in front of him in the 31. That's an Independence Trophy car. As Anthony Griffith has continues his strong run today. The, uh, the 07 car 
uh, that team tests here quite regularly. Here is the uh, 55 car of Ashby. Uh, Ashby pitting. Ash Zelda Ashby pits. That's not expected. As Zelda Ashby in the 55, there's something wrong with that car, and this is going to be a big blow to Zelda Ashby's hopes of winning this one. Matthias Taub in the 10 car continues to lead. Not much has been happening up here with Taub, otherwise we would be focusing on him a bit more. He's got uh, Cameron Taylor, Greg Woodard, Ian Cooper right in front of him. And uh, t uh, Daniel Lechleiter in the 47 car is still on the lead lap. Moved his way up to fourth in Tenere's home race. So not only are the Vernstroms doing well, but so is Lechleiter's in, in an Independence Trophy effort. The only, uh, we believe the only Tenere doing the Independence Trophy, uh, doing an Independence Trophy run. This 47 car, very strong run for Lechleiter. Uh, the New Yorker has never won a Master Cup Series race. He's come close a couple of times. And here is Darren Cardelna, who's dropped back to fifth after getting stuck behind a couple of back markers. But uh, Cardell, driving for the Melrose Racing Team, which only started, which only started running in the series this season. Uh, Cardell is clearly the uh, clearly been outshining Daniel Melrose today, at, at least. Car number ten, Matthias Taub. Not much going on up here. He still leads. Nobody even close to him. Leonid Roderick and Adrian Devereaux are both a couple of laps down, but they're battling for 20th. That's the final points paying position. These two cars have been battling for that 20th place as if it's the win. Keep in mind, Adrian Devereaux won his first championship by only one point, and he won his second championship last year by passing one car on the track, by, by holding on to a win instead of settling for second. I don't think Adrian Devereaux is going to be the kind of driver that's going to back down. As you see, he almost runs over the 70 car of Scott Stoidler to try to get uh, to try to get that position away from Roderick. Devereaux knows the value of a point, and Leonid Roderick has also lost two championships by only a handful of points, by less than five points, act, believe it or not, in uh, 2002. Here is the 87 car of Darren Cardell as he continues his marvelous run, but in his rearview mirror, getting bigger and bigger, is going to be this car, Matthias Taub, and that is Jacob Eicholtz in the Eicholtz Autosport, the Eicholtz Atlantic car. Uh, that uh, The Eicholtz chassis uh, has not exactly been working for him today, but it's been working well enough to keep him out of the wall and uh, not exactly out of Taub's way, though. Matthias Taub uh, being a little bit cautious around Jacob Eicholtz hanging out, and right in front of Eicholtz is Darren Cardell. Here is the 07 car of Anthony Griffith. Griffith in this 07 car continuing to have a strong run today. Uh, oh, wait, he's pulling up a little bit. He's slowing. Problem with the 07 car. He knew it was going to happen. He pulled up to the. He pulled up in the middle of the track, in the middle lane of the track. He's, that was the safest place for him to go because there were cars coming. Oh, oh, no, what was that? He wiggled, tried to wiggle that car, I think, maybe in hopes of getting it refired. And Leglider got into him. Leglider got loose coming off four. Just a very, very slight scrape across the door. That could have been a much bigger incident than it was. The stewards wanted to have a, a word with Anthony Griffith. But Leglider, a little damage to that car. There are less than 20 laps to go. Only four cars restarting the outside line. Matthias Taub, Scott Stoidler, Dale Roswell, and Darren Cardell. Cardell was the only one of them that took four tires in this last pit stop. Uh, Daniel Lechleiter scored in fourth, but he pitted because there was fluid leaking out of the back of that car. Heartbreak for him. Cardell, though, in the 87 car. Melrose Racing Team rolled the dice, put four tires in this car. He slides to the inside. Ian Cooper gives him space. He moves right around the inside of Roswell. As here comes Cardell now on Scott Stoidler. Looks like he's going to use the back markers. To his advantage as Chris Allen gets in Stoidler's way a little bit as Woodard now begins to hold up Cardell. Stoidler hangs on for the time being, but the Vernstrom coming, it looks like he's going to try to get through on the inside. Stoidler a bit wide, coming through one and two, and Cardell goes through. Darren Cardell is up to second. A podium is on offering for the Vernstrom. Adrian Devereaux and Leonid Roderick are battling for 17th. Again, that's points paying positions. These are two men that know the value of every point. And not only that, but Matthias Taub is one of the is one of the main championship contenders. So is Adrian Devereaux. Adrian Devereaux is not going to uh, not going to lie down uh, uh, here. I don't think, because here look in the background, Darren Cardell is closing in the 87 car. Matthias Taub in that 10 car is uh, worrying himself now with keeping Adrian Devereaux behind him because he doesn't want to give Devereaux any room at all to peek on the inside and continue his battle with Roderick. Devereaux, though, 
I think Devereaux knows that uh, he would be a lot in a much safer position for the title hunt if Taub didn't win this race because Taub has easily clinched the most laps led. Taub slides it a bit wide into one. He's losing himself quite a bit of time just worrying about the, the two-time and reigning champion Adrian Devereaux. Devereaux not playing very nice here as a lap car, I've noticed, but Roderick is right behind him. And I find it very hard uh, to be uh, to be upset with Adrian Devereaux. Zach Duff, on the other hand, though, has nothing to gain here uh, in this 74 car as he scoots on the inside of Cardell and Roderick. Duff in the 74, closing in on Devereaux. Cardell slides it in under, on the inside of the four car as Cardell is now closing in on Devereaux. Matthias Taub, though, in this 10 car, does he have enough left with that car? to make it to the finish are his tires in as good a shape as they need to be for the end of this, this race cardell on the inside of adrian devereaux now cardell got a great exit off four as now the 87 car the vernstrom comes on the inside darren cardell makes a move for it he's going for it cardell is going to take the lead it looks like coming off four look they've got two laps to go tau bleeds at the line but cardell slides the vernstrom around backward slides the vernstrom around cardell leads Taub has so much traffic to deal with Darren Cardell in the Vernstrom lead as he's going to take the white flag. Who could have seen this coming? Cardell leads at the white flag with Duff just behind him. Vernstrom entered the series a couple of years a couple of years ago. They haven't had a whole lot of success. They had Friedrich Jaeger last year, and he was their only driver until this year. The Melrose Racing Team. And Darren Cardell comes across the line to pull off the biggest upset of the year. Cardell wins at Ohio. An unbelievable turn of events puts Cardell in the winner's circle for the first time as Darren Cardell wins the race with Matthias Taub having to settle for second. A very, very good win for Cardell. Way to be, an op way to be opportunistic. And Melrose Racing Team was celebrating this one like you could not believe. Scott Stoidler in car number 70 rounded out the podium, just beating Dale Roswell to the line in the 20 car. Michael Sykes, Scott Bates, both had strong days along with Gaspar Souza. Yevgeny Kuznetsov in the 8 car had a fantastic drive of his own, just ahead of Peter Short. Quiggles Jr., Dan Lechleiter in the 47, and Jacob Eicholtz were the cars one lap down. Four cars finished this race on the lead lap. Ashby finished two laps down, having to make that stop on, unscheduled stop on a green. Ian Cooper's productive day for Davina Henton as she comes away from this one with 10 points. Lewis Kingston was the last of the cars two laps down. Devereaux and Roderick were three laps down, but were battling like it was for the win over two points for 17th place. Both of those drivers said in their post-race interviews that they weren't going to give up two points because both of them knew exactly how much those points mean to them. Packer Carroll gets two points in his home race despite uh, some rather messy uh, early part of the race. There was a fair bit of discussion between Volpe Racing Team and Mariano Zavala, because they believed that Zavala had put Carroll in the wall unfairly. And Cameron Taylor, in his home race, in his first race for Manicor Engineering, takes the final point for 20th place. Let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship leaving the round of Ohio. As you see now that Michael Sykes has the championship lead in the red five, over Davina Henton in the 11, Matthias Taub, Ashby Devereaux, and Kekin in the major title contenders, it looks like at this stage. 55 points separate first through sixth. Uh, but as you go down, there's a pretty big gap between uh, Kakinen in, in sixth and Melanie Klevno in seventh. Leonard Roderick has been having a couple of very strong runs lately in that four car. I wouldn't count him out. Gaspar Souza and Luciano Savarol could be factors as well. Scott Bates and Peter Short uh, are long shots at best, but uh, Scott Bates has got a couple of very strong tracks of his coming up. So we could see a turnaround in the fortunes of that 88 team. Uh, Kurt Pliskin in the 16 car beginning to make um, was beginning to make some headway pretty much up until this race But thankfully uh, a lot of the drivers around him in the championship didn't have such hot days either Lewis Kingston and Zach Duff didn't score points Tenshi didn't start the race Quiggles jr. Got a fair couple of points and Quiggles jr. Will need those points in his battle with Yevgeny Kuznetsov for rookie of the year and One look at the independence trophy shows that Jacob Eicholtz and Dan Lechleiter both made a fairly significant gains in their bids to claim the independence trophy the TM Master Cup Series will run a race number 13 at the Grand Detour of Western Illinois in Quincy. And that track has had some infrastructure updates, some long-awaited infrastructure updates. So we should be seeing a much nicer facility when we get there.